You probably missed it, but last episode, I stealth camped in a graveyard in Texas. Ooh, just after Halloween. It was pretty awesome, but the next morning I got up and headed east across Texas to find some of the most awesome roadside attractions I've ever seen in my life. Not that Texas town and a shack outside. Range. You know what I'm talking about. Just let me know if you want to go to the home out on range. They got a lot of nice girls. <laughs> Driving east in Texas, the landscape becomes more green and lush, and it also becomes more lush with roadside attractions, and I have never stopped at an apparition site before, but the signs just compelled me. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! Pecan Grove Apparition Park is a monument, a shrine, that was built by a gentleman uh, more than 30 years ago after he had witnessed the uh, apparition of Mary uh, in his field when he got his tractor stuck. It's a very interesting story, but this park is as interesting or more interesting um, the nature and the history of this little park, this little pecan grove. And as I'm wandering through, uh, there's a couple, man hanging out in his pickup truck, and his wife apparently uh, was wandering around picking up pecans. And uh, she came up and started talking to me and sharing the history of this very interesting place. And you're saying that the lady that owns this property was the lady that saw it? It was a husband and wife. Okay. Um, the husband was uh, putting out fertilizer. Okay. The, the real spot where she appeared, it tells you a sign there. It's like a, a quarter of a mile down the highway. Keep looking to the right. It tells you the farm road to turn. And then yeah, yeah. So I saw the two tenths of a mile. Yes. Okay. You go down there and you look to your right. It's open pasture. And it I guess the statue is still there. I didn't look. The head in the middle of the pasture, right? Is the spot where she appeared. Right. He was putting out fertilizer after a rain, and he didn't realize how wet it was. And he had one of those buggies in the back that throws the fertilizer out. Right. And it sunk down. He got stuck with his tractor, and he spun down all the way to the axles. And he was standing there crying, and he thought, "Dear Blessed Mother, help me get this thing out of here." And he was about to give up. She appeared to him. And she told him, get on there and drive it out. It's like, he tried and he was, he got on there and he drove right out. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's behind that, there's one of the guys. And the wife was living in every year they took. So what is this over here? This, this like used a... to be a roller skating ring. When oh, I was wow. a kid, they still had the roller skates in there. The <laughs> leather lace up ones with the rear steel wheels. Wow, outdoor roller skating. Yeah, Never was, seen that before. Yeah. Well, it's gone down. Well, I mean, is is this still in use somehow, or? No, they, they haven't used it for years. Oh, okay. Years, uh, probably 25, 30 years. Huh. But, but uh, see, the grass is going on there, and yeah, it's yeah. falling, and the tree fell on the electric lines and stuff. But can I walk is, back through here? I yeah, want to see. Just, I want to see what a outdoor roller skating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it makes perfect sense. I've just never yeah. seen one. They had a June box over there on that stage. Be careful. That tree limb fell on here and pulled this wire down. Yeah. And they cut a huge tree down a limb, and every now and then it does that. But yeah, the jute box was in that where it's in the hole of the jute box. The jute box they played rock music, and people would skate. They had soda water and chips and peanuts. So you skated here? I skated here twice when I was young. Yeah, that's I great. I never learned how to skate. I was too afraid. I was too young. I was like eight, nine years old. Yeah. But yeah, it was. And the, the owners, their children, you should have seen them skate. Yeah. They could jump up in the air, kind of like the... This, the ice skaters and, right. and do three flips or two flips and wow. you know, skate on one leg and wow. all those kids could skate. I always admire how they could, huh. how they could skate. But yeah, yeah, this is a great spot. It is, and it was so well kept. But like I said, now it's gone down because there's nobody hardly to keep it in the family anymore. Right. So we come here and pick up some of the limbs and 
trash and and keep off some of this and pick up. That's it. So you said it's been 30 years since this was a yeah it's, an operation. It's been a good while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. One man that had an artificial leg. Even. Wow. We don't know the story behind it, but he's deceased now. They have his card on there. Huh. But uh, they feel they fit it. Have it supplied with flowers in here, people. Even live flowers. Sometimes we have as many as three, four, five vases. You know, I really don't know what else to say. Other than visit Timeless Texas Classics. If you're not getting the picture so far, I absolutely love roadside attractions. And Texas apparently has more than their share. Uh, I've visited quite a few roadside attractions in Texas and would love to go back and do a few more. In fact, I'm thinking right now uh, maybe a, a road trip, not just looking at road tri uh, roadside attractions because I love them so, and they're so interesting, and there's probably tons of stories behind them, probably just like the, uh, the guy that owns this place. But I had to get back home. The weather was getting colder, and uh, I decided to get back on the bike and head towards this Roman aqueduct that I stealth camped behind uh, in the in the Roman city of League. But that is next time. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that because, as you know, subscribing to this channel will make all your dreams come true. It's a fact. And I will see you next time.